So today I'm going to talk to you about top 10 lessons from music's biggest names. What, um, there's, there's so much to be learned from, from, our, from our rock stars, and you've heard a lot of it today, and I'm going to talk about a lot of the themes that you've heard throughout the course of the day so far. Um, but as digital marketers, I think there's a lot to be learned from today's rock stars. Um, and couldn't we, all, uh, couldn't we all benefit from infusing a little bit of rock and roll magic into our everyday lives as digital marketers? So it's formatted as a top 10 list, so I'd like to start with lesson number 10. Brand is everything. Ryan Schultz talked about that, this a lot this morning. Um, and this lesson is brought to you by Lady Gaga. As Ryan talked about, musicians have a unique perspective, a unique point of view, a unique brand. He talked about David Bowie. He talked about Bruce Springsteen. You guys might know Barbara Streisand. She's known as a classically trained uh, musician with an incredible voice. Eminem is known for his lyrical rapping and from being born on the wrong side of the tracks. And Ed Sheeran is known as being a singer-songwriter who borders on the sappy. Some performers are known more for their image than for their music. And I would argue that Lady Gaga is one such example. When she first came on the scene, she performed mostly pop music. And over time, her musical taste has evolved. But one thing is the same. Her image is really eccentric. We saw it when she wore a meat dress to the 2010 MTV Music Video Awards, and we saw it again when she emerged from a life-size egg at the 2011 Grammys. So as marketers, we all understand that the work is table stakes. How many of us can say we hire the best and brightest, or that our work product is top notch? We have to focus on creating a unique brand that sets us apart and is memorable. OK, so I can't stand up here in a meat dress to make myself memorable. But what I can do is learn from other professional services firms who are willing to be a little bit risky, like Morrison and Forrester, who went to market with their street name, MoFo. <laughs> Lesson nine, evolve your brand. While it's important to craft a long-standing um, brand that's unique to you, What's important is that you evolve it over time, as Madonna has done. Madonna has been on the music scene since the early 1980s. And because of that, she's had to reinvent herself. So every five to seven years, as she releases a new album, you see her look change over time. You saw in Dawn's presentation the, the short hairdo, the short blonde hairdo, and true blue, right? And you see other, um, other images of Madonna on the screen behind me. She has really embraced the irreverent Catholic schoolgirl kind of approach to her brand. And what's amazing is that the two images on the screen behind me were taken 35 years apart. So she's managed to evolve her brand, but really maintain a, a tremendous level of authenticity. Justin Timberlake has also evolved his brand. Um, because he emerged on the scene at a ten tender young age, he's had to grow up in the limelight. And you can see that he's not only learned how to tame his hair, but he's also become much more refined and sophisticated over time. Miley Cyrus took a totally different approach to her rebranding, right? She used to be known as the squeaky clean Hannah Montana, but once she, once she went out on her own as a musical performer, um, she took a sharp right turn and really started to push the envelope in terms of what's acceptable socially. One rebranding effort that went terribly wrong was Prince. You may recall in 1993 when he decided that his name was now going to be this unspeakable symbol that he called the love symbol, right? And when his fans could no longer knew what to call him and they called him the artist formerly known as Prince, he quickly learned in seven years that maybe he should go back to the name his parents gave him. As marketers, it's not only important to have a strong brand, but to evolve it, to keep it fresh, to stay on top of, of trends and shifts in the marketplace. Instead of replacing our brand periodically, it's important to refine it. Unless, of course, you're like Miley Cyrus and you want to make a huge change. But we have to remember to keep our brand authentic over time. Lesson eight, nothing beats a live performance. It's brought to you by the Rolling Stones. Music con concerts are the apex of the musical experience. It's a full sensory experience, as Nate's gonna talk about immediately after me. 
Concerts are huge money. The Rolling Stones brought in over $80 million across an 18 concert performance tour, across an 18 concert performance tour. And they have the unique distinction of having four of the top 20 highest grossing concert tours of all time. Maybe, maybe um, concerts are so fabulous, not just because of the sensory experience that we have, but because of the direct interaction between the musician and their fans. U2's 360-degree uh, tour over three years drew 7.2 million fans to their performances. And technology like Twitter and Bands in Town can amplify that live experience. As, as marketers, we know from the Rolling Stones, we learn from them that we have to focus on face-to-face -face client interactions, using digital to amplify that live experience. We also know from the Rolling Stones, who have been performing since 1962, that fly-by-night performers aren't nearly as impactful as long-standing ones. Also, as marketers, we can, we can start to think about how we set the stage. We have to think about the professional equivalent of costume changes and pyrotechnics. Lesson seven, if you can't do live, at least do video. It's brought to you by Justin Bieber. Music videos are the next best thing to live. They're close to a full sensory experience, except that they're on demand. That means artists have the ability to reach a massive audience wherever they are, whenever they're interested. And Justin Bieber's baby music video is no exception. It is the single most watched Vivo video with 1.2 billion views. It's also the second most viewed YouTube video of all time. There's nothing really remarkable about a 16-year-old singing about heartache in a bowling alley. But what is remarkable is that Justin Bieber put this video online in 2010, just as these digital channels were really coming into maturity. And when his fan base, they were all starting to get mobile phones. So that's really what's remarkable about it. And some people might even argue that Justin Bieber owes his career to YouTube. His mom po started posting his early music videos online for his family to see in 2007. And quickly, his manager discovered him that way. Um, and this is one of his earliest videos. And I loved this, this comment that I found on this video because I thought it summed it up perfectly. So ignore some of the typos. It says, just think, if he's born 20 years earlier, we never have to put up with him. No YouTube, no Justin. No YouTube, and we don't have any of these awful YouTube celebrities. I hope you don't love Justin Bieber. <laughs> my, my husband found that mildly offensive. <laughs> As marketers, we know that video is the next best thing to live. It's like a little commercial that people actually want to watch. It's a great medium for telling a good story. But instead of using talking heads in our videos, we have to focus on higher production value um, quality video. And we have to make it accessible, not just posting it to our websites or to YouTube, but trying to think strategically about where our audience is and making sure that our videos appear there as well. Lesson six, tell a good story and build suspense. This one's brought to you by Weird Al Yankovic. He's a personal favorite of mine. Some of you may remember last summer, he released his album Mandatory Fun in a well-choreographed campaign leading up to the release. About a month prior to the release of his, his album, he posted a picture of himself with the date July 15th posted, and that was it. It was totally cryptic. He then went on to have two media appearances on somewhat offbeat media channels. Then, in the, in the height of his campaign, he released eight viral music videos, one a day starting July 14th, and within 10 days, he had garnered 46 million views of that series. This became his number one album in his 30-year career, and the song, Word Crimes, from that album hit number 39 on the charts, making him the third person after Michael Jackson and Madonna to have a top 40 song in each of four decades. He was quoted as having said, there is no more music television as there was in the past. The internet is the new MTV, and it's available all the time. As marketers, we learn that it's important to craft a well-choreographed campaign. And that means leaking details in advance, building suspense, 
releasing chunks of information strategically instead of all at once, using channels that are authentic to who we are. Lesson five, embrace the element of surprise. And this one's brought to you by Beyonce. About two weeks prior to Christmas 2013, Beyonce, quote unquote, broke the internet when she surprised the world by releasing her album Beyonce at midnight on iTunes. There was no lead up, no prior announcements, complete surprise. And she did this over the, she recorded the album over a course of a year where she was intensely touring. She had a small child. And how she did it, she invited producers and songwriters to come live with her. She made them all sign secrecy agreements so that they wouldn't leak the fact that she was working on a new album. And this album debuted at number one, making it her fifth straight number one album. Within 12 hours, she had 1.2 million tweets on the topic of her album release, leading to the joke that she broke the internet. Within three short days, she had sold 800,000 copies of the album. Rolling Stone's Rob Sheffield is quoted as saying, the whole project is a celebration of the Beyonce philosophy, which basically boils down to the fact that she can do anything the hell she wants to. <laughs> as marketers, it's, it's important to remember that we don't always have to do things the way they're prescribed to be done. We have to do things on our own terms and not, being, not be afraid to make waves or create disruption in the marketplace. Lesson four, choose your channels carefully and it's brought to you by Ed Sheeran. While Weird Al um, chose YouTube as his channel of choice, just like Justin Bieber, Ed Sheeran has used Spotify. He's hitched his wagon to Spotify, and Spotify listeners have completely embraced him. For a 24-year-old artist with only two albums, he's exceeded three billion streams on Spotify. I'll admit, maybe half a billion are from me, <laughs> but he, um, in contrast to Taylor Swift, who removed all of her music from Spotify uh, just weeks before she launched her latest album, 1989. Ed Sheeran went on to say, I've been playing sold out gigs in South America. I've sold out arenas in Korea and Southeast Asia. For me, Spotify is not even a necessary evil. It helps me do what I want to do. So as Weird Al said, MTV of yesterday is gone. We, we heard from Dawn that there's new digital channels like iTunes and Pandora and Spotify. So it's important that as we craft our content strategies, we choose the channel, our channels wisely, being authentic to who we are, choosing wisely, and staying abreast of latest trends. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to communication channels anymore. Lesson three, social media is key, speaking of channels and it's brought to you by Katy Perry. Katy Perry has an impressive 76 million followers on Twitter. It's no surprise that musicians love Twitter. It's a great way to, to announce something. It's so impactful that the top 10 Twitter accounts, six of them are musical artists like Katy Perry. And even though Twitter may not be the right channel for your business, um, it's a great way to engage uh, with our clients one-on-one, -on -one, regardless of the channel that we choose. We have to listen to what others are saying about you. In fact, my table at lunch was talking about great technology to use for social listening. So I invite you to talk to your neighbors about that. Um, but also, it's a great way to connect with your fans directly. Lesson two, collaborate with other heavyweights. And it's brought to us by Eminem and Rihanna. So Eminem wrote the song Love the Way You Lie in 2010, just after Rihanna showed up in the media bruised and battered by her then boyfriend Chris Brown. And this song is about domestic violence. So it's a natural fit for Eminem to reach out to her, notwithstanding the fact that she has an amazing voice and that she's a musical talent uh, on parallel to Eminem. And together, they were able to land the number one spot on the Billboard charts for seven weeks. Um, and it also spawned three subsequent collaborations between the two of them, including The Monster in 2013, which hit the number one Billboard Hot 100. It also was Eminem's first song, first number one song on the R&B hip hop charts. So 
when you're thinking about cross-selling or going into a new market or offering a new solution, business solution, it's important to think about collaborating with other heavyweights. We have to look outside our areas of expertise, choose an equal partner, and truly collaborate. And number one lesson, as Ryan alluded to earlier this morning, focus on your fans is brought to you by Taylor Swift. I have to say that Taylor Swift is a marketing mastermind. I could have done all 10 of these lessons using case studies from Taylor Swift. But the one thing that she does really, really well is fan engagement. Ryan talked about how her point of view is about being her audience's best friend. So it's no surprise that she featured her fans in the video for Shake It Off. She also launched a, a campaign around Christmas last year called Swiftmas. She chose about 20 of her most loyal fans. She hand-selected gifts for them, hand-wrapped them, and in many cases, hand-delivered them to their doorstep. Talk about commitment to your fans. She also engages in taylurking, which is kind of a creepy term, frankly. But <laughs> what it involves is finding her fans in social, on social media and retweeting their comments or are responding to them directly, which if you're, if you're a fan, I mean, nothing is more flattering than being noticed by the artists themselves. She also invited 89 fans, get it, 1989, to her secret sessions, which was a record listening session in her living room. She made home baked cookies to round out the experience. She also hosts tea parties after each of her concerts, in which she asks people from her entourage to hand select the most excited fans in the crowd to celebrate behind the scenes after the concert ends. And this picture, while you might think it's stock photography, is actually my friend Stephanie from college and her husband Russ at one of those tea parties. <laughs> yes, I got approval to, to use it in my presentation. This graph is from the book Think Like a Rock Star, and it really encapsulates what I'm talking about with, with customer engagement. Most of us focus on the largest segment of new customers in trying to build brand loyalty. But we can learn from rock stars like Taylor Swift that we have to focus on that smallest tail end of the curve, the most loyal fans, the brand advocates. So as marketers, we can learn from Taylor Swift to focus on our highest value customers, to make our customers feel special, to personalize our communication with, and touch points, and to drive loyalty with special rewards, perks, and other special offers. And then maybe we can all be as wildly successful as Taylor Swift is. In conclusion, quick recap of the top 10 marketing lessons for music's biggest names. Number, one, or number 10, brand is everything. Number nine, evolve your brand. Number eight, nothing beats a live performance. Number seven, video is the next best thing to live. Six, tell a good story and build suspense. Number five, embrace the element of surprise. Number four, choose your channels carefully. Three, social media is key. Two, collaborate with other heavyweights. And number one, focus on your fans. Thank you. <laughs>